Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Good day. Is this David Sparrow? Uh, this is David Sparrow. That's, that's uh, Paul and Golden. <laughs> and we'll, nice so to Paul meet you. Golden. Paul Golden, David Sparrow, you both are welcome to the Valder BB Show. Thank you so very much. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, millennials. I have several of them. So let's talk. <laughs> Perfect. It's one of our favorite subjects, too. Exactly. All right. Enlighten me. What, enlighten me and my audience about millennials and money and what, what we're dealing with. Well, let me just start by saying the National Endowment for Financial Education, which is my group, has been doing a pretty heavy research agenda over the better part of a decade looking at the financial challenges of millennials. Um, you know, we started with their college experience and now we're following them into adulthood. And, and we're learning that for this generation, it's more than just debt. There's a, a struggle in meeting life events that we all kind of expect we'll engage in during our lives, things like getting married, starting families, and for some people, even buying homes. And the partnership we did with Parents Magazine was looking at a very specific aspect of the family finance dynamic, and that's what happens when you bring a kid into the equation. And we're finding that uh, two in five of the millennial parents that we interviewed say that the, the quality of their financial life is unacceptable, that they feel like it needs some improvement. But more surprising, 51% of the survey respondents said that they would trade a year off of their life for better financial security. So we've learned that it's more than just debt. It's overcoming the inability to save and doing a lot more to kind of get your financial well-being on track. And so many oh. of them, so many of them also wish they'd waited longer to have a kid, sure. too. Yeah. And I think... That's the thing. It's a real shock to the system when you realize you're going to spend $304,000 just to get your kid up to age 18 before he or she leaves the nest or goes to college. And so it's hard to, you know, figure out how you're going to allocate the funds to, to be able to pay for child care um, and health care and food feeding and all the other unexpected expenses, too. Yeah. But we do it somehow, and we bring them to, to fruition, and they go out in the world. But now they're right. faced with debt, you know, so much debt uh, to get through school. They're taking on debt. We're taking on debt. So how do, how do we beat this? Did the surveys tell us how to do this better? Well, the survey was more about, you know, what are the problems, I think, that, that uh, parents are facing. Um, our story, which, which is on parents.com slash family finances, um, and we also have plenty of resources at smartaboutmoney.org slash family, offers a lot of tips. But I would say in terms of debt, I think the most important thing is attack your smallest debt first, and that when you pay that off, you're going to build a lot of momentum to um, then attack the next smallest and the next smallest, um, and eventually you're going to get yourself debt free. Um, but that's the approach that we recommend. And really budgeting, just looking at every expense that you have through a want versus a need matrix and figuring out which things you can live without, uh, which things you, are true needs. And that's a great way to uh, reduce your expenses and have more money to support all the things that you need to support as a family. Okay, I want my audience to know that David Sparrow is the senior editor of Parents Magazine and Paul Golden is the director of smartaboutmoney.org. Let me ask you, Paul, you, the, so what else would the, the survey reveal that was shocking? I'll say it in that aspect. Yeah, you know, I mean, actually, unfortunately, a lot of it was. Um, one thing that jumped out to me is that 35% of the survey respondents say that they're paying more than 50% of their monthly household income toward housing. So, you know, we've long said, hey, you want to keep your housing expenses around 30 to 35 percent for your mortgage and rent. But that's just not the case for a lot of people. So if you start to look at the, you know, the the feeling that you're living paycheck to paycheck, this is a big reason why. So it gets back to the fundamental basics. So the things that like David's talking about is like how we need to budget. I mean, that's a very 
basic conversation, it's a starter conversation, but this is the importance of budgeting and prioritizing your savings is to overcome that. Right, and honestly, half of the people who set up a budget or said they set up a budget, don't follow it. Right. So it's it's set it up and then you really have to reinforce. You have to meet with your partner every month and say, how are we doing on this? How are we doing yeah. on that? Or you, you go with an envelope system or you go with a setting it up online, but you, you really need to allocate every dollar and figure out where your money's going and what you, what you really need and what you can afford to live without. Right. Now, yesterday they released a survey, uh, I think, statistics that we're doing better in America. Life is better for us. Is that impacting what the survey looked at? Well, there's a lot of overconfidence among millennials. This is a diverse, uh, highly educated group. They have uh, an incredible sense of security in the, and, and they're confident in their abilities. Um, we have to remember with the millennial generation is that they're coming into adulthood during eight years of economic growth. You know, they still are feeling the impacts of uh, the Great Depression, but, you know, they've, they've had, you know, jobs and they've had income and, and they've had savings and those type of things. So, I mean, it's like it's relative to thinking about, you know, where you are and the comfort level of your finances based on your situation. Some people are certainly struggling. Living paycheck to paycheck is a very real thing. And, and when you're talking about, you know, having an emergency savings or saving for retirement or saving for your kid's college, it becomes a very daunting list of to do's if you feel like, you know, my month, my monthly money is uh, just running out every month, every time I get paid. I mean, <laughs> just true. immediately. That's true. This is great information, guys. Is there somewhere on, online that my audience can see the survey for themselves? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, well, the, the survey and, uh, and a lot of great tips and, and a number of different financial areas uh, are available at parents.com slash family finances. Um, and also there are uh, a bunch of great resources at smartaboutmoney.org slash family. All right. And will this be profiled in the current issue of Parents Magazine? This is in the October oh. issue of Parents Magazine, which is on the newsstands uh, as we speak. I love it. Got to get a copy today. I thank you guys very much for talking about this. This makes a difference. All right. Thanks for having Our us. Our pleasure. Thank you.